All right, so um, I'm here to talk about mapping waterways and um, how that can be beneficial for conservation and for um, general use of the public. So a while ago, um, I'm a fish biologist by trade, and a while ago I realized that, you know, the maps of waterways were inaccurate, and they, the depiction of the data that's involved with mapping wasn't being done very effectively. So I kind of wanted to move away from fish biology and move more into um, the mapping of waterways. So I, um, I set about doing that. And, um, you know, When I, was, when I was doing research, I really appreciated 125 years ago, these cats, you know, um, would haul out these big box cameras in the Puget Sound region. This guy's from USGS. I'm trying to, I'm trying to emulate those guys. I've been hauling my kayak around the western US mapping drought-stricken waterways. But anyway, these guys really went to extremes to capture information using the, the most modern technology of the day. And um, can you hear me okay, by the way? I'm not in front of the mic. I kind of like to look at this. So um, they use, they're using the most modern technology of the day, and they're going through great effort. And um, you know, my thought was, you know, they come up with these amazing pictures from long ago. This is Puget Sound, an area of deception pass. And it's a portal into what the conditions were like back then that we have access to these days. Um, and that's. That's super exciting for a lot of reasons. Um, but you know, I used it in research just to try and assess what kind of habitat did salmon have um, back then in terms of vegetation on the riparian zone and things like that. But you know, today, you know, 15 years ago or whatever it was, Google came out with this 360 camera. They put them on cars. They started driving all around San Francisco or whatever. And this, this street view kind of 360 look around this immersive view became the technology of the day for visualizing roadways um, and capturing that data. Um, but I don't know if you can see my cursor here. See over here? All right, yeah, there's so there's the road, but you can't drop the peg guy over here on the water, right? Nothing happens. So my thing was I gotta solve that problem. So I set out created a social venture with the friends, some people smarter than me who could code, some engineers were like duct taping cameras together and things like gluing them on dinner plates. And after, you know, uh, a long time, we were able to um, come up with a system that worked. And then that eventually evolved into what these uh, off the shelf consumer cameras that you have now, GoPro Max, these 360 cameras you can pay 300 bucks for. In this case, I'm out on Puget Sound here. That tripod on the back of my kayak is got a little GoPro Max camera on the top of it. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to create these comprehensive maps of waterways and um, make, put them on an atlas and make them available for everybody. And what I found really interesting is, you know, as a scientist, I sat through meeting after meeting, even here, I'm not trying to be critical in any way, but graphs and charts don't have the impact that images do. And if then if you're combining data with images, giving context to the data, you can really make powerful statements about what's going on in waterways. Um, so just some nuts and bolts. Every 10 seconds, the camera goes off. Because we're on the water, we can have all different types of instrumentation. I drive a water quality meter along with me that takes 10 different water quality parameters. So every 10 seconds, we're taking 10 different water quality parameters. Um, I have an app that geolocates my notes so I can make notes about comments of the number of animals I see or any other points of interest that I see. Those notes are geolocated and then we can mesh all that together into an application that I'm going to demonstrate here in a little bit. But you know ultimately the why for this um, is that from my perspective you know we can only get so much from an aerial view. The aerial view has great purpose um, and, and, it, and it works really well for lots of things but as you'll see when you have a water level view, you get a different granular um, impact. If you're at the Louvre and you step back from the Van Gogh, you get the whole thing, you can see the beauty of it, 
But by being there, by actually being there, you can step right up to the image and actually see the details of the breast strokes and things like that. So I like to make that kind of analysis. I'm going to try and um, go live here. That can be dangerous, so please forgive me if things don't come out as planned. But you, so the work we do, you know, we work with state, federal, local agencies. We want to make everything public, though, so we make that part of the work we do with those folks. And um, we create an atlas, and this atlas has all the areas that we've mapped so far in the U.S. It's about 4,000 miles of rivers, not a ton considering there's 3 million, right? We also have a partnership with National Geographic helping the folks over here in the Okavango Wilderness Project map their data that they're collecting. There's another couple thousand miles of um, waterway data that's been collected there. So for the Puget Sound project in particular, you know, my, my idea was like, look, I've talked to lots of folks at Puget Sound's in trouble. Um, we'd like to take revenue that we make off um, consulting services and turn that into conservation efforts for in mapping areas that need to be mapped. And so um, for the Puget Sound effort, you know, we, I set out and I'm, so I'm gonna map the Puget Sound, it needs to be done. So I created an atlas of just the Puget Sound, going around by kayak, got, you know, about, done about 300 miles. I've got 1,700 miles to go, right? <laughs> and just a little bit of left, left. Um, but um, so you can go on and to the website and find the Puget Sound atlas and then access these different areas that we've mapped by clicking on these blue lines. And you know, one area that we mapped was here um, in, in the Port of Tacoma. And you don't get the opportunity to as just someone who wants to explore, to get into these ports. I had to talk to the port to get permission to come in there with the gear and get this, get this detailed information. And so, as you can see, it's kind of you know a 360 view, just like you would have a street view. Um, you can look up and around. You can click down one scene at a time. Each scene has metadata associated with it, and that's the data that I talked about that I'm collecting while I'm out in the water. So here's the different water quality parameters and the timestamp associated with that scene. And that data changes as you go from scene to scene. Look how big that ship is. I was blown away. You don't realize how huge those things are until you're right next to them. It's incredible. Um, also, you can chart that information, right? So the blue line is captured in this charting feature right here. Um, you can pick, say, pH and it shows you the survey miles that are shown in the map. Um, and if you watch the red line, it shows you where you're at on that chart as you make your way along. And you can go to anomalies that you might see in the data where there's spikes or things don't look like the average and look around and in context kind of see what are the conditions in that area that may be causing pH spikes. Um, you don't always get lucky and have it happen right next to a paper pulp mill, but um, it gives you a reason. You know, if, if, you're, if you're working for the Department of Ecology for agencies, you're going to want to look at that data and go, "Okay, I want to go here and maybe do some more work." It's going to give you some ideas about where you can do more more information. And right now, um, you know, we're using this map here. Uh, it's an Esri-based map and. When I first started, I was adamant that this wasn't just going to be street view for rivers, right? That this was going to be useful for the co my colleagues. And so having geospatial, geospatial data as part of this application was really important. And we went through the Esri Startup Program and became Esri Partners. And therefore, we, this is an ArcGIS Online map, right? So you're able to add different geospatial data to this map. And in this case, these are the animal counts. That I saw, and, and so you can start clicking on those, and you know, see the, where where the different animals are that I counted. Um, and each one of those has different data associated with it. There, I saw fourteen seals at that location. Harbor seals love marinas. Who knew? Um, but it's not just about management, right? It's about um, 
the vision of Earth Views, the vision, my vision, was to use this compelling platform to connect people with waterways. Um, because my belief is that if they get the opportunity um, to see something like this in Puget Sound and the beauty that's there, you know, you can go along the shoreline and you can look at it from the air, but you can't get into these these little coves, these little fingerlets are just amazing. They go way, way, way back, um, these little fjords. And, um, you know, my hope is that people who get to experience this beauty, people who get to experience the waterways in this manner, might become better stewards of them, might want to participate in being part of the waterway more. So, you know, this was just, you know, this is called Fish Trap Cove. An area when I, where I went, and it's was spectacular. Um, just kind of pushing through here. What's my time? Am I doing okay? Five minutes. Um, so another feature that we have is tags. You can add tags. Anyone can sign up, add their own tag to the imagery um, by clicking on this tag feature right here. And in this case. Um, I was approached by the Orca Network as I was working out there, and um, they came to me and they said, hey, did you see, and they zoomed up to me on their, their raft, they said, did you see that whale? And I'm like, no, I, was, <laughs> I didn't see the whale. I was over here, you can see me down here rowing away. Um, I was over here making sure I was staying 15 to 30 feet off the shore. And they're like, well, this beluga came by. And um, we saw it, but we can't find it now. And so, you know, that information is contained in the tag. Um, you can, uh, there's a link to the Orca Network site. You can bring up an image of a beluga that they saw, that they gave me a picture of. So that's, that's also kind of a cool feature, which kind of keeps these waterways, these um, virtual spaces alive by continually adding data organically. Um, so a guy came to me who heard about the Puget Sound project. Um, he said, I work with OpenStreetMap and I do a lot of work with folks and data and updating OpenStreetMaps and I hadn't th I knew about OpenStreetMap and I really appreciated OpenStreetMap and had often thought about having OpenStreetMap as one of our base map layers here, you know. Um, but hadn't, you know, there's always another thing to do that you're not getting done, right? <laughs> so I hadn't gone that far. But um, it got me thinking, especially when I heard when he told me about this conference, is what is, what can EarthView's role be, be in helping OpenStreetMap and how can OpenStreetMap help EarthView's? And you know, I, I was in the I was in the uh, Esri startup program with Mapillary when Mapillary first went in the Esri startup program, and um, I know about the relationship that Mapillary had with OpenStreetMap and how cool that was. And I thought, wow, it would be cool if we could kind of nurture a, cert, a similar relationship for waterways instead of streets. And an example of what's going on here is this is the Elba River up in Washington State. And um, this area they're showing right here is basically a lake from the impoundment of the Elba Dam. And the Elba Dam was torn down in 2015. Um, we went down the Elba River 48 hours after the last dam came down. It was the largest dam removal project in the history of the world because we wanted to capture the baseline conditions of what the river was like. And here you can see this area right here where it's all exposed and our track through that area, that's the dry lake bed after the dam was removed. So, um, you know, the goal there would be to have the most recent up-to-date tracks available for OpenStreetMap data. And what we're doing right now is we're scaling. Before we were, we built our own cameras and we hauled them down the river ourselves. With the GoPro Max and other off-the-shelf cameras, we have about 30 cameras out around the US right now. The Georgia River Network has a couple cameras and they just mapped 900 miles of rivers in Georgia in the last five months. The state of Pennsylvania wants to map 2,700 miles of their water trails. We have a few cameras in Florida, couple in New Zealand. We just got one in Iraq with the Iraq River Keepers. We're working with the River Keepers in um, the Hudson. So lots of opportunity to scale here and really um, achieve the dream that I have and we have of filling that atlas up with blue lines 
and getting the three million miles of waterways in the U.S. Um, and there's also this opportunity um, here. This is a this is an Esri map, but essentially, you know, from an API perspective, we're really working hard at just allowing um, any base map, whether it be Mapbox or OpenStreetMap or anybody, to take our data, have a survey line, have a transect line, and then click on it and have an overlay of an Im of an Im a 360 image of that area. Um, so this is an app that we're really is in is in production, but eventually, you know, we could have a, s a section of code that anyone could put into any mapping application that would allow that 360 imagery to be available for those maps. Um, that's it.